Welcome to MathCast Edition 10, where we will be using the area model to illustrate factoring trinomials this time. Quick review. Positive algae tiles are blue, negative algae tiles are red. And a reminder of the main rule here is that the algae tiles can only contact along the same side lengths. So if you look here, x can abut against an x squared because they have the same side length. A 1 cannot abut against an x squared ever because they do not have the same side length. Even if we stack a bunch of them together, this is incorrect. So we can only put the same side lengths against each other. Again, you may wish to pause this and read this for a little review. When we are expanding, we are taking the dimensions of a rectangle and moving towards the area. When we are factoring, we are starting at the area and moving out towards the dimensions. Factoring and expanding are opposites of each other. So let's begin. So I have been asked to factor the following, x squared plus 4x plus 3. So that means I'm starting with the area here and wanting to move to the dimensions. So I normally start with the biggest piece I have. In this case, it's an x squared, and I put it in the upper left corner. Now I'm going to move these pieces around, trying to form a rectangle. You'll notice I have a few more of them now that I'm working with trinomials. And I'm going to try this setup first. And if I arrange all my singles, I'm very close to having a rectangle, but I am one piece short right there so this arrangement isn't going to work so I need to move things around a bit so instead of having this X on the bottom I'm gonna rotate it and try it on the side up here see if that helps move these together a little bit better and I think I might be on to something here I put these in together and look at that I have made a rectangle so now I need to measure the dimensions. Everything's positive here, so that's quite nice to work with. So x times x gets me x squared. x times positive 1 gets me this bottom x. And it's safe to assume that the rest of these will be positive ones as well. Just do a quick check. x times 1 is x. 1 times 1 is 1. That looks good. So my side dimension here is x plus 1. My top dimension is x plus 3. So the factor here of x squared plus 4x plus 3, when I break that into its two binomial parts, or the length and width, if you wish to think about it that way, is x plus 3 and x plus 1. Again, some people show this with the FOIL rule. If you wish to check, x times x is x squared x times 1 is another x, 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 1 is 3. If you multiply that out and collect like terms, you should get back to here. Example 2, I wish to factor the following, 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. So I have a whole bunch of algae tiles here to move around. So I'm starting with the area, working towards the dimension. So I'm going to organize my x squareds together. I could either do it this way or this way. Doesn't really matter. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to place some x's beside and see what happens. I'll put some along the bottom. And just kind of playing around, seeing what I can come up with. And, oops, that's a little bit together. So why don't we rotate or break those up and do them one at a time. All right, and if you look at that, looks like I found it first try. So that's kind of exciting. So I'll place those on there. And now I just have to calculate the dimensions. So if I need an X here, probably going to need an X along this one as well, and possibly a one here. So that would leave me with, all right, x plus 3 on the side. So let's test to see if this works. So x times x is x squared. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is x. First row looks good. 1 times x is x. 
1 times x is x, and 1 times 1 is 1. The remaining look pretty good. So my dimensions here, I have x plus 3 and 2x plus 1, so the factored form would look like that. Third example, 6x squared minus x minus 2. So right away we can see there is absolutely no way I can make a rectangle out of these little pieces. So here's where I have to invoke the zero principle, and I can bring in pairs of zero. So if I bring in a negative x, I have to bring in a positive x with it. And I'm going to do that a couple times here. So I'll bring in two more blues and two more reds to go with it. So this is still equivalent to my opening expression because I brought in pairs of zero. So I'm going to try and make a rectangle out of this now. And let's see what happens. Well, all my blues fit nicely, so that's good. If I stack the reds on the edge here on the right-hand side, oh, looks like I'm onto something. And look at that. I have made a rectangle. So now I just have to measure the dimensions here, or come up with the dimensions. So I'm going to start with this guess on the top. And I'll start with this on the left-hand side, and I'll double-check. x times x is x squared. That seems to work. x times negative 1 is negative x. Okay, the first row is nice. It's the same thing in the second row. I'll just double-check the 1's. 1 times x is x. That works. 1 times negative 1 is 1. That seems to be an acceptable match. So my dimensions here are 2x plus 1. 3x minus 2, so the factored form would look like this. And you may w wish to take a second, pause this, and reread this. So as long as I bring in pairs of 0, they can be added into this whole process, but they have to be in pairs. So that's the 0 principle again. Example 4, and my last example. I wish to factor negative 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. So again, this represents an area, and I wish to find the dimensions. So I'll start with my two negative x squared terms here. Uh, I'm going to put some blue against them, matching up the edge length just to see what happens. And well, I'm on a bit of a roll here. Let's see. This is shaping up nicely. And uh-oh, I have a problem. I have one left over. So I need to switch a few things here. I'll leave my x squared terms there, but I'm going to rotate two of these x blue x tiles and see if I can rearrange a little bit. And we'll see if that helps out. I'll move these two up so they're a little closer. And oh, it looks like I might have a solution here. There we are. I've created a rectangle with all the pieces I had. I did not need to use the zero principle and add anything. I came up with a solution. So the dimensions now, I need at least one negative here and one positive to multiply together to get this negative x squared. So that pattern looks like it's going to fit for the second one. Now negative x times something is positive x. The only way for that to happen is if I multiply by another negative. And that seems to work. So I'll put these up as well. So my top dimension is shaping up to be 2x minus 3. Now to get a positive x on the bottom, I need to multiply this row by positive 1. Just checking, 1 times x is x. 1 times negative 1 is 1. Looks like I've got a nice match here. That would make the right or left hand side uh, dimension to be negative x plus 1. So my factor here is negative 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 factors into these two binomials, negative x plus 1 and 2x minus 3. If you want to pause the video here and attempt this question for yourself, I will uh, post the solution as soon as you've had a chance to try it. So the solution, and I'm saving a bit of time just by placing the tiles properly to begin with. If you count them up, I have 1x squared I have six negative x's and eight positive ones, leaving me just to determine the dimensions. 
So I will start with this, an x and a negative 2 on the left hand side. I'm going to try an x minus 4 on the top. If I check, x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. Seems to fit in the first row. Negative 1 times x, negative x, that works. And negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. I seem to have found the winning dimensions. So that means that x squared minus 6x plus 8, when it's factored, becomes x minus 2 times x minus 4. Once again, thank you for your time. If you have any suggestions, concerns, or questions, please feel free to send me an email at childs underscore math at yahoo.com.